Calculating numbers on a rental property using the paper napkin analyzer. Ken Van Lu, author of the Modern Wealth Building Formula, How to Master Real Estate Investing. You need to learn how to do the math. Let's take a look at it today on how to calculate the numbers. Real estate investors have to learn to love the numbers. Love them like they are part of you. For a good part of the bad till death do us part. Never leave the numbers because they are the core of the building blocks of the rental property analysis. What numbers do I run? Well, what should anybody care most about when real estate investing? Cash flow. Cash flow or monthly earnings. It doesn't matter whether you are investing in a single family home, a duplex or a larger multifamily home, apartment buildings. You need to know the numbers either way. What determines cash flow? Income and expenses, simple. People make metrics out to be so complicated. It's no wonder more people aren't involved in real estate. In reality, the numbers can be one of the easiest parts of shopping for a property, even if you failed pre-calc like me. Number one, figure out the monthly income. That's the gross income. This will either be the rent, the current tenants are paying, the asking rent, or if you have neither of those, you can talk to a local property management or real estate agent who can give you the market rent values for that property. If the property already has tenants paying a certain rent or you have an ideal asking rent in mind, make sure it's realistic for the neighborhood before moving forward. Are the existing tenants paying the above market rent? They may be inclined to leave, and if they are paying below market rent, there may be room for future increase. Two, calculate the monthly operating expense. These may include property taxes, insurance, property management fees, mortgage or financing costs, and homeowners association fees. Most importantly, don't forget vacancy and repairs. They are a real part of any property investment and they can dramatically affect the cash flow. Still, many people don't think about expenses. So here's how to estimate expenses. Property taxes. Look on Zillow or another online source for the most recent annual tax amount and divide by 12. Insurance costs. Get a quote from an insurance provider. Property management is usually around 10% of the monthly rent. Utilities. Ask the previous owner for bills so that you can get accurate utility counts. Financing. Use an online mortgage calculator like one here and see what your monthly mortgage payment is going to be. Confirm with your lender the down payment, the interest on the loan, and get ready to close your deal. It's really that simple. Now, HOAs sometimes have fees that are hard to determine. The seller or agent may have to help you get those numbers. If you know the annual fee, divide by 12. Don't skip out on finding out if there's HOA fees because they can surprise you. Vacancy. Conservatively estimate 10% of your monthly rent towards vacancy. In situations where you have a rock star property, managing your tenants, you still want to be conservative and have that 10% margin. Repairs. Again, this is an estimate, but it should not be left out. Just like with vacancy, you want to know what's happening in case you're going to turnkey this property. I use 5% of the monthly rent is usually good. Conservative can mean closer to 25%. You got to use your judgment on this, but don't overestimate the quality of your property or estimate too low. A third item, subtract the monthly expenses from the monthly rent. This is your net income, your monthly cash flow. Hopefully it's positive. Four, calculate the returns. Two numbers I want you to see on any property. Commercial, we look at cap rate. Capitalization rate is income over value. Rate of return is your rate of return each year over your investment. You could study a little bit more about net operating income and all that kind of good stuff. I don't want to complicate things here. Let's just keep it really, really simple. This is how to calculate. So the lowest I would see on a residential property is about 8%. And even then, it's a good reason to stay low. Anything over 8% means you're, you're doing well, in my opinion. So cash on cash return, 8% and above. I like to have better numbers, but that's what you want to shoot for. So if you pay all cash for the property, you know, you're going to have obviously different numbers on this. And that's why I teach you how to calculate infinity return on some other videos. And these are the things that I want you to focus on. Understand your net annual income divided by total cash invested equals your cash on cash return. Understand these differences. One measure doesn't always equal the other measure. You want to check both different ways. They are not all the same for all cash buys. So you want to look at this professional tip. If you can 
compare to cash on cash returns to something that you would put in the market and it's above, I would recommend going into real estate. Learn how to calculate these numbers. Learn the math. Check out my book. Subscribe now. Go to KenVanLoo.com and get some free gifts and make it a great day.